Good morning, everybody. Ben Good here morning. with Fly Plugins, and I'm here this morning with uh, my business partner, Nate, and uh, Corey should be uh, popping along here soon. And we make up the Fly Plugins team, and uh, we have office hours every month, uh, fourth Friday of every month, where we answer your questions about uh, WordPress, any one of our plugins in our plugin lineup, uh, online business marketing. And, uh, you know, if you have a question, feel free, to, feel free to send it to us. We have an online form uh, on our website. I believe it's flyplugins.com forward slash office dash hours. And uh, you can send us any of your questions and we'd be glad to answer you. So welcome. Well, we do have a few questions cataloged here. Um, since we last met up at the end of September. So I can grab those if we want to start on them. Yeah, absolutely. Let's do it. Good right. deal. Okay. Uh, let's see. The first one here from Adam. He's using WP Courseware, and he wants to know if it works with uh, Divi, and I'm assuming he means the Divi Builder from yeah. Elegant Themes, right? Yep. So, uh, yeah. so, so the quick answer to this is yes, it, it does work. Um, the uh, the plugin the plugin builder or the I'm sorry the page builder um, allows you to build out your page and, and add various elements and that sort of thing to it. So so the course units are a custom post type, and uh, you can basically uh, you can b basically build out your course units with the page builder. Um, one thing though that we are and we're actually working on this right now. Uh, we're actually working to to make our, our course units a little more flexible. So at some point, we're going to make it to where you can move other elements of a course unit. For example, we have navigation buttons at the bottom. You have your little uh, mark is completed box uh, and just little elements like that. You'll be able to move those around. And eventually we, we want to get to the point where we actually have um, integration with with Divi so that you can create Divi elements within uh, within the page, you know, maybe it could be the navigation units or navigation buttons or the mark is complete, completed button or whatever, whatever you're trying to, you know, move around and, and position on the page, you, you'll be able to do that with a, a Divi element. We want to, you know, do things like uh, Beaver Builder. I think Beaver Builder has a great page, uh, page builder and we'd love to get integration with them as well. Um, so it's in the works, but currently, yeah, you can build out your course units with a Divi uh, page builder. Yes, it's a good one. Yeah, there are so many good ones out there now. Um, obviously, we've been oh, using sure. Beaver Builder for a while, but yeah, that will be that will be pretty fun when we get the ability to sort of move things around and tweak them. Okay, let's see what we have now. Oh, this is a good question. I don't think we ha we've talked about this for a while on Office Hours. Um, Multi-site for WP Courseware. What works? What doesn't? Can I monitor progress on courses at a multi-site level? So a couple of questions there, but good ones. Yeah, so, so basically uh, from, a, from a really high level perspective, Corey's done a great job with uh, WP Courseware and it, it is multi-site compatible. It, it functions um, very well with multi-site. In fact, we've done quite a bit of testing. In fact, uh, if you go to our demo site, our demo site is based on multi-site and we are demoing WP Courseware on multi-site there. Um, but to answer your question, you were looking for a, a, a way to have a high level look at course progress. Um, that's not necessarily a bug or an issue or anything like that. It's just not a feature that we've introduced into the plugin. And so that's actually kind of a cool, uh, a cool request. Maybe it's something, something that we can add in at some point. Um, but for now, yes, the, the answer to the question is yes, it, it works and it works great. Yeah. So, I, I mean, to tack on to what, what Ben said, um, there's no high-level overview in the multi-site network part, but WP Courseware functions individually in each site in a multi-site. So um, if you wanted to have more than one uh, store with a course, you could um, in a multi-site network. Just there's no... You can't monitor progress on a multi-site level or an overall level. So it's a good distinction. Right. Yeah, you're basically just going to enable and disable the plugin from multi-site. And then the rest of it will work just like it would work on any other WordPress install. Yeah. Good deal. Okay. 
Um, let's see. I've got a question from Camilla. It just says the topic is CSS. So, assuming course styling, would you yeah. have the customizer now? Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, no, it, it's a good question. I, I kind of, I can probably, we can probably go a bunch of different ways with this, but yeah, yeah, with with any element in in basically any uh, aspect of WordPress can be modified with CSS. With re, with regard to WP Courseware, there's there's elements in WP Courseware that you can obviously write CSS for. You can add that uh, either in on your own style sheet, which you would have to enqueue, or you could use maybe your uh, WordPress customizer. Sometimes they allow for uh, custom CSS within the customizer. Um, you could even use a plugin. I believe there's uh, one called uh, Simple CSS or something like that. Um, so there's various ways you can do it. Uh, with WP Courseware specifically though, Corey's done a really cool job of actually uh, taking some of the elements of course units and quizzes and uh, he's added those into the, uh, the, the customizer so that you can actually go in um, you can you can click a button and get your little color picker and you can select colors you can change um, you know just various elements button colors that kind of thing uh, within WP courseware and then if you want to add your own custom uh, CSS on top of that you can you can absolutely do that as well yeah there's lots of ways to add CSS and customize the courseware including the customizer like Ben said um, but if you're if you're good at working with WordPress themes, like you can customize um, any part of WP Courseware. And we have some tutorials out there um, in, in addition to the customizer uh, capabilities. So, yeah. Right. But 22 elements in there, I think, if I counted correctly. Yeah, we yeah have there's quite, quite a few. few, yeah. Yeah, so it, it, it will get you pretty far. Yeah. Yeah, and we'll probably add to that um, as we go. I know right now we're we're uh, uh, pretty deep into working on the front end right now, so there's a little yeah. little hint for our next update. But um, Corey's been doing a really really good job of adding that stuff to the customizer to make it super easy for you guys to modify elements in WP Courseware. Got it. Oh, here we go. Can you please demo how the instructor role is supposed to work? So the instructor role is basically um, the ability to allow someone to either create or manage a course. Um, so so if, uh, if you give somebody an instructor role, they can log into the back end of WordPress and they can create a, an, a course um, from the course level, module, unit, you know, quiz, quiz question level. Uh, what they cannot do is they cannot... Um, they cannot see other people's courses um, and I believe they cannot enroll students into other people's courses as well. Um, right. However, they will be able to see all students uh, that are in, in the website. So if let's just say there's three different courses, three different instructors, you'll see students that are enrolled into the other courses, although you won't have any way to manage those other courses, only your own course. You can only manage the things that you create or if an administrator gives you um, author, authorship of a course, um, then you can, you can edit obviously that particular course and you can change authorship. Corey, I think Corey added that in a couple of versions back. Uh, it's a really yeah. cool feature. So now you can change authorship for, uh, for instructors, but that's essentially that's how it's supposed to work. Great. Yeah, and uh, Charlotte, I just linked to this has become like an invaluable resource in pre -sa in the pre sales queue. Um, your instructor role post, Ben. So I just linked to that in the chat window, and that walks you through everything, um, all the different ways you can use it and the capabilities. Um, and also, there is a video there uh, from YouTube. Yeah. It's embedded. Uh, and, and to answer your last question, Sharla, um, do you change authorship by selecting the instructor? And the answer is yes. Yeah. So within the course, within the course settings, there should be a tab. Um, I think it's just, it's course instructor or instructor, yeah. something like that. So I don't have it right instructor. in front of me. Yeah. And you can, you can change the instructor there that you'll have a select option there 
and you can start typing in the name of somebody and then you can grant them access. One caveat though to that, when you change authorship, it's going to ask you if you want to change authorship for, what are the, what are the two elements, Corey? Is it the quiz question or is it the tag? I can't, I can't remember now off the top of my head. So while you're looking into that, Ben, um, I'm gonna answer just a couple more questions from Sharla. So Sharla asks, um, do they have to have backend access or are they supposed to be able to work from the front end? And to answer your question, um, they will have backend access, they should anyway, because they're at an elevated level um, of, of permissions inside WordPress, the instructor role. So they should have access to the backend and they should only be able to see uh, the WP courseware um, part of the plugin. They can't edit any settings um, for WP courseware. Uh, they have very limited permissions in that they can only access course modules, units, um, some student capabilities, the quizzes, but only their authored, um, you know, courses, units, modules, quizzes, and questions. Um, so. Uh, Hopefully that answers that question. Yeah. And so just to kind of bounce off what Corey said, like you're, and it's just going to be for WP courseware. So like, I know some people yeah. are worried that they're going to get access to like WordPress settings or things like that. It's just, this is the only backend things that you're going to see are with regard to WP courseware. courseware. So courses, modules, units, quizzes, questions, some student elements, no orders, no subscriptions, no coupons, no tools, no settings. So none of those other, other features of WP courseware should they see. Um, and I, I just wanted to confirm it's quiz questions and tags that you have to decide whether you want to transfer authorship or if you want to keep the current authorship um, where, where basically the, the new author would not be able to edit quiz questions or tags unless you give them um, the ability. And, and you'll have a checkbox where when you change the instructor, you'll, have, you'll see a checkbox pop up and you can either select it, deselect it, and then you can update the course instructor um, yeah. So that's the caveat. Yeah. And, and Charlotte, if you have issues with, you know, the instructional not doing what it says it's supposed to be, I mean, you can always reach out to our support and we can yeah. try and help with yeah. that if, if needed. So yeah. um, another question from her is re relating to the instructor is, can you have more than one instructor listed per course? And that answer is no. You only have one instructor. Um, and then you can, I mean, you can have administrators that can access all the courses, but an instructor can only access the course that they are authored to or multiple courses that they are authored to, but only those courses. It's very, it's a very limited role. And we, we uh, introduced or we've had it because um, a lot of times uh, on a site, you can have multiple instructors and they usually only have one or two courses that they manage and that's it. It's not, it's not meant to be like a sub administrator role or anything like that. It's just, they're the instructor. They get to manage the students, the content, everything about that course. So, yeah, right. We've had a few requests for multiple instructors. I don't know that it's been um, Too requested a ton of times. I don't yeah. think so, but it's, I mean, it makes sense for sure. Um, so you could, uh, do a little bit more without having to, you know, if you have trust issues about giving someone admin access, um, yeah. I guess it would be pretty handy. And, and another thing you could do is there are multiple plugins out there on the WordPress repository that um, allow, allow you to make um, additional roles that have certain capabilities. So like, let's say that you wanted, in this case, Sharla, a course reviewer role. Um, you could always install, um, and I, I forget the name of the plugins off the top of my head, but one of these user role edit plugins and basically give them uh, the ability, all the instructor abilities, plus some additional ones if you wanted to. Um, we do define additional capabilities um, that you could give to another role um, that you could probably edit in one of these other plugins, but um, in WP Courseware, we don't allow it to be edited um, unless you use another plugin. So yeah, yeah. And there's some really cool ones. Um, there's some really cool ones out there. I 
sometime within the last year, I can't remember why, but I used one from Code Canyon that allowed you to actually sort of white label the back end. So you could not only control what a, cap- what a role saw, but you could also sort of customize the layout. Um, yeah. Here's the plugin that I remember. I just, che- I just put it in. Yeah, that's the one I always think of. <laughs> yeah, so that's the one that I, I thought of off the top of my head. So it's a free plugin from WordPress.org. It's pretty flexible. Um, and you can edit roles and add additional capabilities or take capabilities away. Like that would be helpful for what you're looking for. Yeah. Good question. Good stuff. Yeah, great question. Yeah. And I think, I think there's a couple more questions in her, what she submitted. Okay. Yes. I just realized those were not, those did not line up all the way. <laughs> um, can I have a teaser unit with a quiz? I don't think the quiz will display though. I think, will it? I don't think, I, yeah, well. Yeah, because the teaser unit oh, is she meant says it did to, not. Yeah, it, yeah. It, yeah I, it won't. The I quiz don't think I've tested that. No. Well, no, it should not because I mean, if you take the quiz, it's not, it can't record to anything because it's not associated with the user. So, Right. You know, the content. You don't have to register, different. right? Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah, people can consume content, you know, and that's not a big deal. But yeah, there's, I mean, there would be no purpose really to have a, a you know, someone in, in the general public take a quiz because, yeah, you can't record it anyway. Right. Yeah. Pre registration. Yeah, right. And, and I could see maybe an instance that that would be uh, useful. But what you could do, Charlotte, is you could use like let's say you wanted to collect information from people that aren't taking like that aren't enrolled, you could always put like a I don't know like a gravity form or a contact form on there that acts as a survey or some type of anonymous quiz uh, that you could put on there. But as far as our quiz module, like you have to be enrolled into the course, um, and that's why it does not display on a teaser unit when the user is not logged in. Uh, yeah, and Charlie, if you do want to just create a survey, um, you could probably use a form plugin for that. Uh, contact yeah. Form Seven, Formidable, um, Gravity Forms, Ninja Gravity. Forms. Ninja. Yeah, Ninja yeah. Forms, yeah. Any of those. those would not require registration, so you could you could just embed those right in the the teaser unit. Yeah. That would be the best way. Real quick, um, I don't know. I think we have a couple more questions for Charlotte. I just got this one in, in YouTube chat um, from Kevin. He says, and by the way, hi, Kevin. Um, he says, is the PDF to instructor for quiz results on the roadmap yet? So um, currently when somebody, a student takes a quiz, uh, the, the uh, downloadable PDF for quiz results uh, is available, obviously, to the student as soon as they're done taking the quiz, assuming that you're using you know, auto, automatically graded questions, even if they're not, once the quiz is complete, you, you can still get that. But there's no way to get the quiz results to, uh, to the instructor via PDF. I think that would probably be pretty easy to add that feature on the back end, Corey. Would I not be, I don't know that we've ever had that request. He was just asking if it's yeah. on the roadmap and it's, I mean, I think it's just making a button on the back end that does the same thing as it does on the front end, but just on the back end. It's almost like, like we ended up, I think we added the ability for um, instructors and administrators to um, create oh, a certificate. Qu- yeah, certificate on the back end. Yeah. Yes. So I'm wondering if we don't do something similar for quizzes. So are we saying like in the detailed progress, like they can view? Right. Right. So I want to say that that's. Yeah, because that one's just a that's just a button at the end of the row, isn't it? Yeah. I, yeah, I see what you're saying. Yeah. Um, yeah, that should be pretty easy. Um, we'll add it to our list and, um, yeah, but yeah, I don't think, I don't, I want to say that that's not even on our list. I don't, I don't think. Yeah. That. I don't know. Kevin, Kevin mentioned, actually, I got him on YouTube chat here. He said he asked for it a few months ago, uh, submitted oh. a ticket for it. So maybe it just didn't make it on the board. I don't know. Um, oh. we have a, or maybe have like it's a, on the board, but we haven't quite prioritized well, it yet. And I think we have some <laughs> kind of automation that works between help scout and, Trello or something, and maybe it just didn't get didn't get brought over. But um, yeah. oh, oh, so what he's saying is they really want the PDF only to go to the instructor and not the students. Well, 
you can have it on the back end no matter what. And all you have to do is turn it off for that particular quiz because it's a quiz setting. So um, it, yeah, that, that can totally happen. It's just, right. I mean, it's per quiz. Yeah. 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 So you just have to turn it off for the quiz, but it'll always yeah, turn it off. The back end. So kind of like the certificate, you can turn it off for the course, but it'll always be in the back end. Yeah. And you, yeah. Yeah. If you don't want them to download the, the PDF, just turn it off. Yeah. Well, and to, to clarify, Kevin, it's not going to send it automatically to the, to the instructor. It'll just be a downloadable option in the back end. Um, I guess at some point we could make that a, well, I don't even think we have the ability currently to modify the administrative emails. Um, you know, the automated emails. Oh, the tags. Yeah. So we could add it in as a merge tag at some point, but we don't even have the email set up, I think. So at some point we're going to yeah, have, there's, those no, there's no email that goes out for, well, there's an email that goes to the instructor when the quiz is completed. Yes, but it doesn't contain a PDF. No, right. that's what I'm saying. There's no way currently to even edit that. So at some point, maybe uh, we can add the ability to edit and customize those emails at a merge tag for, uh, for the certificate the, to be included in that. Just kind of like it is for the student because you can add that for the student, just not the instructor. But yeah. Um, let's see here. Oh, was that everything Kevin had? Yeah, that was everything. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Okay, cool. Thanks for the, uh, thanks for the heads up on that, Kevin. We'll, uh, yeah, for sure. we'll, we'll check into that for sure. Um, let's see. There was another question here from Charla that was related to, um, let's see, Qu this is also a quiz related, um, and results related. We don't really have a dependency between quiz results or the quiz score and what displays. It's kind of either an all or nothing. So she was asking if she could, let's see here, pull that back up. If a quiz must be manually graded, or I'm sorry. The one right, at, the one right above that, yep. Um, like yeah. if, can if I, the explanation can only display if the student uh, achieves a certain score. So could the explanation field be dependent on a score? Yeah, that's right now. It's kind of all or nothing. Yeah. Well, the explanation field on a question, I, I believe, yeah, it's a, it's a toggle on or off for every question. Um, so it's, it's a, yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a quiz setting, not a per question setting and it's on or off. Um, but what I was thinking though is currently there is a way to, um, you can have custom messaging for, for, uh, for certain grades. Tags. So yeah. if it's above a certain grade or below a certain grade, maybe that's not what you're looking for, but that would allow you to put some customization in there. To kind of answer the, cause she has a kind of a second part to this question, not only with explanations, but with the PDF results, when she gives students multiple attempts, she wants it to display after the last attempt, the, the passing attempt. Yeah. And so the answer to that question is, um, no, we don't. So, all right. Am I wrong about this? But I no, believe that, we don't. Yeah. Right. You're right. Yeah. And the, I think the custom feedback messages, that's a good workaround. And we have a, people are using those a lot of different ways. Like one of the ones that comes to mind recently is somebody was in the mental health field. They want someone to answer all these behavioral based questions, depending on what the score is at the end, they want to send them to one of two different options for further, um, to, to study further on whatever the topic was. Um, so you can use that to sort of direct people different places also. Um, and I believe the PDF only displays after they've passed. Is that right? That's true. It is true. Yeah. PDF download only after the students pass the quiz. So they have a well, number of tries. Actually, let me, let me uh, preface that with depending on the quiz type. So yeah. if it's a blocking quiz, yes, after they pass. If it's a non-blocking quiz, it's it's obviously going to show results immediately. That's the right after non-blocking yeah. quiz. Yeah, and for those listeners that don't know, we have three quiz types. We have a survey mode, which is no correct answers. We just collect information, and then there's the quiz mode blocking, which requires the student to correctly answer questions before proceeding, and then 
the student must achieve a minimum pass mark to progress to the next unit. And then the third type is the quiz mode non-blocking, which requires the students to answer a number of questions before proceeding, but allow them to progress to the next unit, unit regardless of pass mark. Yeah. So uh, just depending on what type you have, um, will the PDF display or the results. Yeah. I was just thinking that I, I wish we'd had the number of customers that we have now to help us with this uh, because we were making these decisions, what, seven years ago and trying to think through all the logic of how somebody moves through results. Um, whereas now we get so much great feedback from everyone about how they want it to, yeah. want it to flow. But the good thing is we're going to eventually, I mean, no timetable yet, but eventually we're going to add a lot to the quiz module um, and redo a lot of parts, a lot of different parts of it. It's just <laughs> on our on our list, but we have a couple other things we need to do before we get to that one. So no timetable yet, but I would expect in the future that our quiz um, module and abilities will be far greater than they are now. Yeah. So thank you for your feedback. Yeah. We just need to free it up a bit, give it some independence, that quiz. Yes. Let it do its thing. Yep. Um, there were a couple of more in here related to, okay, we covered that one. Um, oh, and just one more from Charlotte. Let's see. I actually get this quite often in pre-sales. Can one person register and pay for multiple students? And the way that I generally, you guys may have a more elegant solution, but I generally recommend that they set a price and put it into an e-commerce product like EDD or WooCommerce, sell it, and then upon purchase confirmation, use the bulk upload CSV file and have the purchaser send the names and email addresses. Um, then the admin can just upload everybody all at once. Yeah, that's mm. currently that's the that's the only way. I know at some point there was there was actually an e-commerce plugin. I don't think it's around anymore, but it used to have a uh, an integration with a membership plugin, and it was called something like Umbrella or something like that. And oh. it was it was basically where same, exactly what you're talking about, Nate. People could buy a, a, a like for a block of students for like you know 16 seats or something, and it was you know pre-purchase, and all they had to do is fill in the names and email addresses. And uh, they were able to purchase that. And I think we were looking into integrating with them okay. just, just before they went under. <laughs> oh, no. Actually, no, actually, they didn't, I don't think they went under. They just, they changed ownership and I think they went a different direction. Um, okay. But, yeah. So that would add, that one actually created WordPress user accounts? Yeah, it would have created WordPress user accounts and then it would have also enrolled those users uh, into the courses as well. So I think what it is, is like you would pick your, how many seats you want and then you would check out and I think it would give you like a form or something. And then you can, in, you could input names and email addresses and submit. Mm. And then it would, it would do all the stuff in the back end. But right. yeah, so, I don't know. That could be like a, I don't know, maybe like a, a good add on. Yeah. I was okay. thinking like maybe even like a gravity forms add on or ninja forms or something. I don't know. Some well, I could see it like, cause I mean, anybody with development experience could probably write this. Um, in that uh, when you enroll into a course, you just display a small form that has multiple entries, that has a name, email, address, uh, fields. And then once you click enroll or you purchase um, a course, it could just enroll them with user accounts. So and they're tied to that product. So if like if it's a subscription or something like that, if the subscription expires, then they all get the enrolled, mm -hmm. you know, type deal. So it's almost like a team um, aspect. So one person, one person purchases uh, the product and adds his team members in like a second step or something like that. So. Yeah. You could also fire off emails with, um, like a link to the login page, your username, your password, temporary password. Yeah. It probably wouldn't need too many options, but yeah, it's not a bad idea for an add on. So, or maybe we could just make it native to WP courseware. I mean, we could. <laughs> <about that. laughs> 
<laughs> just making it making an option. Just get right on the, that. <laughs> the payments. Come on, Corey. <laughs> yeah, we don't we don't have anything else going on. No. You can hammer it out this weekend, right? You don't got nothing going on this sure. weekend. <laughs> I mean, let's do it on Halloween night. You know? <laughs> uh, no, I, I think it's a good idea. I think I'm going to add it to our list um, and see where we land on it. Maybe. So, yeah, we have a lot of, we have a lot of really cool stuff on, on our plate. Um, but as Corey mentioned, I think after our, our next update, which is going to be a pretty big update, actually, um, we're going to focus a little bit on, on the quiz stuff, but uh, there's no, there's no ETA or timetable on that. We've got some other things uh, in the works as well. We've got, I mean, we've, <laughs> we've got a bunch of different projects we're working on. Um, so I, I don't know that it'll, it, it would even be something we'd get done this year, but this year, yeah. but I think the quiz, uh, the quiz update is going to be really cool. It's going to make, make the quiz a little more robust. I think the the flow might be a little bit better. Uh, the UI is going to be improved. Uh, most, most importantly, uh, it will have the ability to add additional question types much easier. Right now, the reason we have not added question types, additional question types, is because um, when WP Corfer was first uh, created, um, unfortunately, it, it wasn't created with a, a developer extension mindset. So, uh, you know, writing an extension or adding a, a, another quiz question type is not very easy right now. It's actually very difficult. And so that's the only reason we've not done that. But with Corey's update, whenever we get to the quiz thing, uh, we will have that ability to add additional question types, which is going to be really cool. It'll be a game. It'll be game changing for the quiz feature. Yeah. Yeah. And I didn't think about this until uh, after I sent our last user survey, I thought it might've been a good idea to ask people what, what, what's the top question type that you'd like to see that isn't there? So if anyone is listening and you have a, a top contender, let us know. Uh, because we, we've had requests for several different types. Some of them are more obscure than others. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, we can probably guess that, you know, drag and drop ordering is, it, it would be more popular than um, some tedious mathematical uh, functionality question. Yeah. 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 We had a question come in from YouTube. Um, it's a question. What, what new features will be included in the next update? Um, all I can really say is the next update is just going to have, uh, and it's going to be a front end update. So you're going to, I don't know that there's going to be a lot of visibility. In other words, for, for the average person that doesn't really know a lot about what happens on the back end, there might not be a lot of visibility on the front end, but let me assure you the back end is, is getting like a huge, huge overhaul. Um, but what this means is that we're working toward uh, having the ability to create custom templates for course units, which is a big deal. Like I mentioned earlier, you can, we'll be able to move uh, various components on the front end around your navigation buttons, your mark is completed button. You know, there's going to be messaging and there's just all these little features in the, on the front end unit that, that will be able to be moved around. Um, which currently they're not, it's there. You cannot really customize unless you really know what you're doing. You really can't customize the course units very well. And what we're working toward as well is we're working toward really uh, trying to uh, get us positioned so that we can, we can integrate with plugin builders. I'm sorry, page. I keep calling them plugin builders, page builders, they're plugins, right? Um, yeah. <laughs> like Beaver Builder and Divi. Um, you know, we want to be able to work with like the guys from Astra themes and, and, you know, uh, things like that so that we can, we can make WP Courser look really killer from the front end, uh, perspective. We, we've toyed with the idea at one point of maybe coming up with a custom WP Courseware theme and just giving it away. But, um, I'm not sure that we want to take on that project. It's a, that's a pretty big project. There's yeah. a lot of administrative duties for that. And I'm not sure we want to tackle that. But we're happy to yeah. we're happy to integrate with some of you guys' favorite stuff. I mean, we love we love Beaver Builder. Um, Divi is yeah. a great thing. El Elementor. I mean, Elementor's it's growing. It's a it's a, I mean, it's a free plugin that you can get out on on wp.org, and it's a, it's a great plugin. It's it's mm -hmm. become, it's an up and coming plugin. Um, so we'd like to get integration with a lot of these, but so we're taking the next step to get there. Um, we're not going to be integrated with these with these things in the next update, but we are we're taking that step to get to that point. Um, we, yeah. we've really had a, a, a back end overhaul 
Um, and, and this is exactly what Corey's working on right now. So like I said, you're not going to see a lot on the front end, but just realize that the back end is, is getting, it's getting overhauled big time. And uh, you're going to see some really cool things coming in the future. Yeah, and, and the next update, just to tack on to what Ben says, we're, we're focusing on templating. So uh, allowing you guys to customize how the front end of WP Courseware looks. And so just like you know, WooCommerce allows you to customize templates, well, we want to kind of have the same thing in that you guys will be able to customize more fully, you know, how uh, the course progress short code looks you know, um, or how it could be laid out or how the next and previous units, um, unit buttons on the unit page looks or is located. So um, a lot of cool things with the front end is coming in the next update and hopefully we'll, I don't know, have it out soon and we hope that you guys will be impressed with it. But it's just, a, like Ben said, it's just another step on our way to 5.0 is what we're calling it. So yeah. to where everything can be extended a little bit more add-ons can be written a little more easily so that we can start adding these great features that you guys have, have uh, told us you want. So um, a, a lot of things happening, but not necessarily the ones you would necessarily see right away, but they will be in the future. So. Yeah, it's kind of like it's kind of like Nate was saying, you know, it, it, hindsight's twenty twenty. I, I wish we had all these, you know, requests and things a long time ago because when we first started building this plugin, we, I mean, we we kind of built it for ourselves, so to speak. We had we had our own, we were scratching our own itch, um, but we didn't think of all the other various scenarios and and possibilities that could come along with WP Courseware, um, and along with that too, we you know when we started developing. Um, we weren't developing with a developer mindset in which you could extend our plugin. We weren't thinking that we could integrate or, you know, have a, like we've had a recent request from somebody to have a REST API for WP Courseware, which is a great idea. Mm -hmm. um, it's just something that we're not ready to implement just yet until we can get to the 5.0 stage and then we can implement you know, something, you know, something like that, a REST API, which would, <laughs> would be really awesome. Then you could, you could do things like, you know, work with uh, Zapier, um, or, you know, just even integrate with other, other plugins and, and we do have integrations out there, but you know, they, <laughs> we've, we've had to really, uh, work hard to get those integrations really functional with WP courseware. In fact, we, we, on a consistent basis, even this, just this week, I dealt with two, two of our add-ons and just, just working with the functionality between WP courseware. And it's, it's not that easy. It's just that our, our, our plugin, unfortunately it was not, um, we just didn't have a good foundation and we didn't think about these things as we built it, but uh, we are on our way to 5.0, which is exciting. Mm -hmm. And uh, once we get there, like Corey said, I you know sky's the limit. We're going to be able to do a lot of really cool things. Yeah. yeah. And uh, people don't, people don't see what Corey's been doing for two years with, or more, which is rebuilding this entire plugin yeah. and making sure that along the way it still works for everyone. <laughs> That's insane. So it's yeah. a, been a ton of work for him, um, even though at times it, it doesn't roll out with bells and whistles. Um, yeah. It works. Yeah. We're trying to maintain backwards compatibility, but at the same time, add new features incrementally. Yeah. So. Yeah. yeah, Ben, we didn't have any other plugins to look at when we did this thing, so... Yeah, we were kind of pioneers, weren't we? <laughs> um, Would have been helpful, though. Well, it's funny because it was the first at everything. I mean, it was it was Nate and I. You know, we we were we were kind of into the online business thing, but we'd never built a plugin business. We didn't even we've never even written a plugin. Neither Nate nor I can code to save our life. And and here, you know, we're trying to build a plugin. You know, that you know runs an online course, and that's all we know. And and it's it was it's been a fun journey, but yeah. We didn't have any, any guides or <laughs> it's been, it's been an interesting journey. Yeah. Yes. So I, I noticed here, Charlotte's been um, chatting us. Uh, I noticed that she had one additional question and I, I'm not sure we addressed this, but I'll, I'll say it. So when manually grading a quiz, can we add a feedback box per question so the student receives feedback with their grades. Right now I have to grade the, grade the test and then write and send a follow-up email to explain the grades. 
Hmm. Yeah, this is this has been definitely on our radar. I can I can definitely yeah. tell you, you're not the only one who's requested this. Um, and Corey did add that email button to the to the to the page where you can grade your quiz. Page, yeah. um, and mm-hmm. I get that's probably where you're sending the email. Uh, and the reason we've not added this is for the very reason we're talking about. We just have not gotten to the quiz feature yet. This is all inclusive and part of the quiz feature. Um, yeah. And so we're, we're working on it. We're working on getting there. Um, that's definitely something that uh, we've had multiple requests on, though, just have, having feedback per quiz, or I'm sorry, per question. Uh, on manual quiz, grading. Or manually question, grading yeah. quizzes, right. So uh, definitely on our radar, Charlotte. Thanks for the... Uh, for the nudge on that. And uh, yeah, we definitely, we definitely have that on our radar. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Just some sort of simple text entry field there, I think would yeah. be cool. Um, mm-hmm. Just yeah. an option, toggle it on, toggle it off. And then, because right now I'm assuming they have to go through the, uh, the email button on a class classroom page, right? No, they can do it right I, on the I, quiz page now. Actually. Or right on the yeah. quiz page. Okay. Yeah. So not, not too bad a workaround. Yeah. Wow. That was a good session guys. Yeah, seriously. (laughs) Looks like our next uh, office hours. It's going to be November 22nd. Yes. So uh, yeah, getting close to uh, to our Thanksgiving time there. It's cool. Mm -hmm. See, I see one more question from Charlotte. Charlotte, you're just giving us all the questions today. Uh, So is there a way to wrap a course title on a certificate? I don't think you can, I don't think you can add HTML in those titles. I don't believe so. You could try that, but I don't believe you can add a break in there. Um, mm. What I've had to yeah. do in the past, because I know we've had some, some folks that have some really long uh, titles is we've just had to change the font that you're using for the title, which is unfortunately at this point, well, no, actually Corey added in some filters. Um, yeah. so you can add in a filter. You, you have to add a font, which is a manual process. You have to get a, a web font that works. Uh, and there's a, there's a particular file set that you have to download for each font. But once you have that uploaded to your site, you can add a filter to change uh, font style for certain things like the title. Um, yeah. And that is a filter at this point. At some point in time, that's another feature we're going to be working on with the course certificate so that you can customize those easier, uh, easier ability to add fonts, change fonts, that kind of thing. Um, definitely on our radar for that too. Um, but yeah, at this point, that's the workaround. Yeah. Just make it bigger. Yeah. And if you need, if you need help with you that, with that filter, Charlotte, just, uh, send us a note in, in our, uh, support system and we'll, we'll, uh, we'll get you, uh, a filter that you can use. And, and, and if, if you need a for suggestion us. for a web font, we can, probably fine. You might even be able to use one of the web fonts that you already have uh, with WP Courser because I think we include like four or five of them and all you have to do is actually just change the font. Yeah. You just drop it into the folder, right? In that. Yeah, you can drop it in. What I would recommend probably is to drop it into a separate folder outside of WP Courser. Otherwise that'll get overwritten. Um, Oh, right. Yeah, yeah. But then you can, within the filter, I think you can, I think you can specify the path, right, Corey? Yeah, the path. Yeah, yeah okay. you can put it wherever as long as the path is right. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah. Easy enough. But the font size should do it. So you may be able may only have to do that. Yeah, you might be able to get away with just font size. Yeah. We've got to update that so it includes hand of Sean, guys. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that is our favorite font. We went with Architect's Daughter instead and now I'm second guessing that decision. <laughs> no, that was. You should have done hand of Sean, man. <laughs> it's an inside joke, guys. We, Nate and I think we, we, I, I can, I guess this is putting it nicely. We overused hand of Sean quite a bit back in the yes. day. Yes. <laughs> I'm still using it. Oh, my bad, dude. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, and uh, yeah, I even told Ben I saw it on a plumbing truck about a year and a half, two years ago. Hilarious. Like, I know that guy's font. <laughs> uh, good stuff. Yeah. Well, thanks, everybody. Yeah, thank you, guys. Be sure to tune in next time, November 22nd, 1 p.m. Eastern. Um, and if you have questions, be sure to visit us at flyplugins.com forward slash office dash hours. Submit your questions. Register for the 
for the webinar. You can always watch us on YouTube. Nate's probably going to have this up on the website soon and we'll have a, we'll have a YouTube version up as well. So thanks guys for joining. Don't forget if you have a chance, subscribe to our YouTube channel and that way you don't miss out on really cool videos like this. Thanks for watching All guys. Right. Thank All you. right. Thanks guys. See you next time. See you later. Bye.